Hi everyone, Mosmo here from the Blue Root team. And today I wanna to break down like the first step of building out your Zoho CRM. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with the Zoho platform and Zoho CRM specifically. And in today's episode, I wanna start at the beginning. So what I'm gonna cover is a few things. Number one, once you sign in, exactly what you see and how to actually clean it up. So when you sign in for the first time, the CRM is gonna have a lot of clutter that you don't necessarily need. Most businesses don't need all the clutter. Once we're done that, then I'm gonna to go to number two to set up your personal and company details. Those are very important things locale, language, currency, time zones, all of that stuff to make sure your CRM functions for later videos with your workflows and all of that. So we're going to keep it really simple today. How best to set up your CRM. I'm also going to go through a little bit of field planning and things of that nature. As always, if you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe. We love hearing from subscribers and communicating and uh, yeah, enjoy the video. All right, so let's jump into it. So the very first thing you see when you first log into your CRM is this page. And so what Zoho needs from you is your company name, right? And so in this sample, I'm gonna call it Massimo Sample Company. Uh, so we're gonna go with that. And so now the next thing that you can pick and choose is loading your sample data. And so we're gonna skip over this. I'm gonna show you how to customize that a little more fine tuned, but you can choose to load sample data. I typically recommend not to do this. Like if you're really trying out the CRM and seeing what it's capable of, for sure, feel free. But if you're setting this up for your business, the sample data is gonna get in the way. So I'm gonna hit load, like uncheck that box get started. So you'll see what happens now. It brings you to this page, right? So the first thing I always tell people to do is to declutter all of the modules. So that's something I like to talk to people about because automatically they get overwhelmed, analytics, marketplace, calls, etc. And so it really depends on your business what you need. But if you see here, you can click this three dots and there's way more. There's products and quotes and sales orders. I mean, if you're the type of business that actually has sales orders and invoices and stuff that you want to keep inside of the CRM, feel free to keep them. But majority of the businesses that we deal with, they want to track deals like opportunity amounts. They want to track leads and contacts. And I'm going to clean it up how we typically clean it up as a business. But as I go through that, feel free to go off on your own way and do it a slightly different way if you want to keep those modules. So very first thing we always do when we set up a CRM is we hit the settings icon. So this back end, I'm not going to go through all of this today. There will be separate videos on certain things here, but where we want to start and where I always like starting is in the modules and fields. So under customization, there's actually a tab here called modules and fields. So if we go ahead and click this, you'll see here that everything along the top is also listed here. And so basically what a module is, think of it like a table in the database, right? So it's like a section. So leads are a group of people and contacts are a group of people. And so it's a section of the database. Oftentimes what we do is we get rid of a lot of these because a lot of clients don't need them. And so in order to do that, you can hit organize modules and then you'll see it brings up this page here. So just by simply hovering over a module and then unchecking this box. So in this example, I'm gonna get rid of products and quotes and sales orders, which a lot of companies we work with do get rid of. I'm gonna go like this proceed. Sales inbox, we typically get rid of. Campaigns, we keep. Vendors, if you're getting rid of sales and quotes and invoices, you probably don't need vendors or price books. Cases is not used very often, so we typically get rid of that as well. Solutions, documents, forecasts, we keep. Visits, we don't need to keep. And social, we don't need to keep for the time being. So what this does now is it really declutters the database. So if you go along the top here now, there's way less modules. So you can see there's only a few more here. And for some of our select clients, we actually get rid of leads as well. We have a separate video explaining the benefits of doing that. If you want to go check that out, you can check it out. We'll have a link on why you could get rid of leads and kind of the benefits of that. If you do want to go that way, when you go to organize modules, you'll see there's a warning here. And basically what this is telling you is there's two sample command center flows that Zoho has built that you need to get rid of. And so in order to do that, it's a little bit of a tangent in this video, but it's actually under process automation, command center, and then you'd have to delete these two. So if you delete this, you delete this. Now you go back to customization modules, organize, you can get rid of leads now. Okay, so that's not a necessity but if you wanna get rid of leads and watch our video on why. Now let's go into some of these modules and I'll show you the best practice of setting up the modules. And I mean, this is what we typically do again for clients. You don't have to do this. We go into contacts, then we go into standard. 
So you'll see inside of contacts and accounts, you'll see a similar flavor. And so what we typically do is we come back here and we get rid of a lot of these fields and we reorganize them in a certain fashion to make it easier to go through things. As a start, we automatically come in here, we make a new section. So what this basically does, it's like a section on the page. You can just click and drag it over. And now I'm gonna name it something. So typically we name this communication links, for example, and we bring in all the communication details. So Skype ID, some people get rid of this, Twitter, we bring in. So any way to communicate with the client, we bring in here. Assistant phone, we oftentimes get rid of this, it's up to you. By the way, if you wanna get rid of fields, you can hit the three dots and hit remove. Mobile, other, fax, not many people use that anymore, but there are certain industries that do still. Phone, email. And we typically try to cluster everything together. So emails with each other, phones with each other. And so this is typically how we set this up. Now, beyond that, up here, we often get rid of a lot of these fields. So you might not need assistant, you might not need department. Uh, reporting to is often something we get rid of. So this depends on what you want, but I would say at the very least, build this section to put all your communication links. We also build a section typically to house all of the information about like the created and the modified. So we typically bring that down into the description detail because most people don't need to see it at the top of the page, at least what we find. And so you could just click and drag and bring it down here. And so this is how you clean up the contacts. And I, I would recommend that you also clean up the accounts and the contacts. So you do have to do this in each of the modules. The benefit here is obviously it's a bit more streamlined. You can find information easier and I'll show you what that looks like inside of contacts, not leads. So if I create a contact, it looks a lot more streamlined. So you can see here, here's the info and then here's all the communication links. I'm not going to go through every module on how to do that, but this is typically what we go through. And so we do this in the leads, then we do this in the contacts, then we do this in the accounts. We typically follow the same pattern, section for info, section for communication links, phone, email, etc. section for address. You can break it up even more, but this is a great start. So those are the two things I want you to do when you first set up a CRM. Clean up the modules, get rid of the ones that clutter, make you crazy or whatever. And then also customize and change the layout of the page slightly. So once you go through that, oftentimes th that's the first step that we do in systems. It makes you feel a lot better about the system. And I'll go through separate videos of how to use it and interact with it and all of that. But the other thing I always recommend doing as a step one is setting up some of your settings here. Personal settings is fairly important. When you click on that, this is just for you, right? And so you can hit the pencil up here and you can change this information. The reason why this is beneficial is in other videos, I'll show you how to merge this data into an email template, for example. So you can actually send out your phone number in an email template dynamically or your colleague's phone number. So it's important you get this right here. And so I'd encourage you to fill out all of this. Secondly, and very importantly, is this section. So locale. You want to choose your language. Zoho supports many languages. So when you hit the pencil here, you can choose many different languages. You can also choose many different countries. You can only choose one, but there's many options. The date format is also something that's interesting. So Zoho assumes this one, which not a lot of people use. And so whenever you create a date in the CRM or you create a record, it's going to show the date in this format. So you're probably going to want to change it to something you like. You can quickly type and it'll shrink the list so you can find something that you like. Depending on what you want, 12 or 24 hour time zones, time zone here as well, EST, etc. And this is important as well because this will show exactly like when you're in the system. If you're in it at 5 Eastern, it'll show that in Eastern. The number format, this depends on where you are. So feel free to customize that and also the decimal. So save. The second piece you should do is the company settings. So this is also important for many reasons. So number one, you can upload your logo. It'll go in the top left of the CRM. There's all kinds of things in here, what currency your company works on. So I'd encourage you to hit the pencil here, go through each of these and fill them out. The more you can fill out, the better. The fiscal year is important for all of your reports, right? So you can customize what your fiscal year start date is. And then all of your reports, when you say, what are my sales year to date? It'll show. Business hours, this is important if you wanna start sending automations. If you wanna send automations based on business hours, for example, you want an email to go out three business hours after you do something in the CRM, which we cover in other videos, you should set this up. So in order to set this up, you hit new business hours, you choose this, and then you can do this. So for example, 24 hours a day, five days a week, or you could do custom hours. So from nine to five every day or different hours every day, and you can customize those hours. Lastly, holidays. Holidays is basically what you think. So you can put like Christmas or any holiday in here. And what that'll do is it'll also affect the automations, right? So if you have an automation that's supposed to go out on a holiday or not on a holiday, it won't. Hierarchy, I'm going to leave for separate videos. But basically in this video, what you've just seen is how to declutter the CRM, how to add custom fields to your liking and move fields around, and then also how to set up your personal and company details. If you do this step, follow our other videos, you're going to have a great working CRM. All right, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe below, and uh, have a good one.